play himself for that invitational. And and also just watching the game on Blue Storm where he just seemed to be like dead and just making his way out with the DTs, that was just incredible. Yeah, really good at control, but uh, without further ado guys, spawning in the lower left corner of the map, the red protoss player that we were just speaking of, RSVP. I'll try and do the next one then. Spawning in the top left corner on Fighting Spirit, we have our purple Terran player, Nasdi. Oh. Yeah, it's worth noting, guys. Zephius and I, uh, we haven't really done any preparation. Like, we haven't cast together. He's just like, hey, man, I really want to cast. And it's like, sure, absolutely. You're the one of the like, developers for Star, but of course you can come cast for a little bit. So, uh, unfortunately, Zombie Grub is now gone. We can either blame him or not. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You, she, you she, can blame me. That's okay. <laughs> no, she, she legitimately had things to do anyway, so it ended up working out pretty nicely, actually, with the timing. That's that's cool. And uh, Now, just, just to note in the initial stages here that... This, how this ladder cup works is that we have these events like we have today and we had one two weeks ago and we're gonna have one in two weeks and after that one uh, there will be an event final where the best players from all of these events are coming oh, okay that was horribly explained but what, what happens is that they game what, I'm, what we call starbo points from these tournaments and the eight players with the most starbo points get to the final event and there will be a prize pool for the final event we are also trying to get some other really cool and neat stuff for that final event, but nothing is set in stone yet. But uh, nothing publicly announced yet, basically. No, yeah. no, but but we there's we, we want to reward the players who ladder and who participate in these things, so we, we'll get some stuff out there. Well, that's pretty cool. I, I know it's uh, again like the Starbo community itself is still kind of in its infancy. It had that little burst of like popularity not too long ago, and. I, I'm glad that people are still enjoying it. Like right now on the stream, we don't exactly have monumentally record-topping numbers, but it's nice to know there's enough people who can chill out on a Saturday, sit back, and enjoy Starbo with us. Yeah, it's, it's really nice to see that. And we're so, you know, it's so I'm so happy to see that this is turning out the way it did. So, um, so we have a fairly standard from both of the players right now. Quick, well, very quick expansion from RSVP. Well, actually, the, uh, the, the thing is, Nazi actually didn't wall off this time, though. This is something we've seen everybody do on Fighting Spirit all day today, and there we go. Now this player yeah. can come down. Just completing it. I actually had RSVP, I invited him uh, to do like a little bit of an analysis thingy uh, on my stream. Uh, I called it like on target, but whatever. But he, uh, he did a little. Uh, Protoss versus Terra analysis, and he showed me this build where you basically open pretty early um, expand and then pretty early sentinels to just contain your opponent with sentinels. Kind yeah. of a Zerg would contain a Terran with mutalisks, uh, so to to make him not want to push out in the early game and be greedy that way. And I'm very excited to see if RSVP is going to try to go for that build because he, he has mapped it out quite a lot. He's kind of pioneered it for Starbo. I'm actually really glad you brought that up because that was one of my favorite things from watching the Invitational, or well, I shouldn't say watch it, we cast it, but I guess we also watched it, where RSVP did open versus Terran players with Sentinel Harass, and quite frankly, guys, Sentinel is one Sentinel at the end of the world. It's not even that scary, to be honest, but when you've got two or four of them, all of a sudden it becomes a very real issue. Yeah, and it's 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 come to the point that I've seen some Terran players just immediately, the, fir the first or second factory unit is just a Goliath, just, you know, to defend versus those early Sentinels. So, but no, he's actually putting out a Robo Bay. So maybe he's being a little bit meta gamish here because these players, we don't have that many really high up ladder Starbo gamers. So they do play a, a lot, ah, each other quite a lot. Can't talk today. So, uh, so it's gonna welcome be... to him every day when it comes to casting. <laughs> uh, just sounds so retarded. Oh well. Well, the, you know, you mentioned before. I was actually really surprised. I was expecting. No, I was hoping to see more reavers utilized today. As uh, you mentioned to me, there was a little bit of a change recently, but I'm a little shocked we haven't seen anything. And I'm not even talking like necessarily reaver drops, but no implementation of them whatsoever through any of the games today. Did did uh, Ars Na Nasdi see that robotics? First, he's not constructing at least. So. Uh, he might be expecting reavers now, I, and it's of course not uncommon just to go early robotics for the observers to make sure you can spot his his base and spot those spider mines. But it would be interesting to see where RSVP takes this from here. Yeah, spider mines are proven to be a bit of an issue uh, for I think every player today that's had to deal with them. The nice thing though is it's. Vultures, I don't think, inherently are broken by any means, but you do see this sort of, uh, it almost looks like they're overpowered just because they can overwhelm so easily, but the reality is, they snowball off of the spider mines. If you can keep the spider mine count low to begin with, then you're not going to have as many, I guess, problems. The struggle won't be real in the late game when it comes to dealing with them, but... 
the reality yeah. is, early on, there's, there's no way to stop a Terran player from defensively having spider mines out. It's about making sure they don't get to the middle of the map. Make sure they don't have map control with the spider mines. Yeah, I like that early observer to, you know, defeat that early uh, spider mine control. Also worth mentioning right now that we are testing out a new way, a new type of vulture movement. And like, uh, I don't even know if I should call it that, just a new vulture. Because the vulture has a unique way in how it moves and, and acts and micros. And, and this one is a little bit more difficult to micro. It's still very effective and it can still almost kill an infinite amount of zerglings if you micro it incredibly well but uh, it, it's just a tad more difficult to move around more like it was in brood war so uh, we're very happy with what we have right now we might see that patched very soon well i mean the, the ion thrusters upgrade is huge i mean it just it, the speed bonus on vultures is almost unmatched i feel but worth noting guys not only do we have a very quick fleet beacon we also have sentinels sentinels <laughs> i'm very excited about the sentinels now oh, actually, man, I Completely scan. missed that too. <laughs> well, the scan missed it as well. This is why I bring it up. The all scan right. saw all this robo tech. It looked like our SCVP was going with these gateways, but that's not going to be the case at all. Hidden down here in the lower left, completely missed by two different scans at this SCV point. Nazdi has not seen the air tech. It's like one. Is he going to go as two base carrier? Like, why would he get the fleet beacon? I'm just kind of puzzled with this. I. Yep. There we go. Okay. Carrier. I. Wow. You know what? Ladies and gentlemen, RSVP gets points for style, if nothing else, this game. <laughs> now, this seems silly, but honestly, in regular StarCraft 2, two base carrier is a bit of cheese that sometimes actually works versus Terran players. So, I don't know how well that's going to translate to Starbow, but because Nazdi is actually not going for any sort of build that's going to have a lot of Goliaths, he's not going to have a ton of Marines, he's certainly not going to have turrets, this may simply just blindside him. Because all Terran players right now in Starbo, I don't care who you are, you watch BCQD, you watch Nazdi, everyone goes for a, like 50 supply plus of vultures, 20 supply plus of tanks, but they don't invest in anti-air early on because it's not necessary. Because every, like Zombie Grab said earlier today, you expect Dragoons at some point, right? Like Terran players, or for Protoss players as well, you expect the Siege tanks at some point. There are parts of this matchup that are so rooted in place that they're not going to change, and that's one of them. The fact that a Terran player is going to have very little anti-air. <laughs> Wow, and he's actually going for it. He's, he's expanding behind this. He's not like all inning. What I think I'm going to try and predict the future, and I'm probably going to fail miserably, miserably. But what I think he's doing is that he's going to get like two, three, maybe four carriers, and then push with ground units, force his opponent to make a ton of Goliaths, and then just stop carrier production and just continue on a normal game. Uh, that would be very interesting to see, but. I might be completely wrong about that. I think he's just going to go all in with this. I mean, the thing is with Starbo, with your economy better... The reason you can't do this in StarCraft 2 comfortably, guys, is because you don't have the gas to support it. But in Starbo, because you mine 8 per trip, like, one geyser is better than 2 in StarCraft. You can actually have the money for this, especially off of 3 bases. Yeah, now that he's getting that third base safely up, it'll be very interesting to see how, how well he commits to carriers. One thing I do not like to see though, and I see some Protoss players do this, is that they, they get like a group of carriers and the opponent like scans and scouts it and counters it perfectly and then they just stick oh God, with the carriers. Scared. He scans the natural entrance, he sees Dragoons and Zealots and this looks like a very like just choice <laughs> army to fight. And he's not wrong, but the carriers, there's going to be three of them and there's no anti-air. Spider mines are not like Widow mines, guys. They do not shoot up. So we're gonna have the carrier defense here. It's gonna be very interesting. But this, I'm I think this is actually gonna go poorly, because like while he's gonna hold for sure, the reality is the point of carriers is to catch your opponent off guard with them. The second yeah. he reveals these, Nazi's gonna make Goliaths. He'll go for the Charon boosters. He'll get turrets down. Ooh, the scan. The scan shows him, and this isn't like one carrier, guys. This is three, and now Nazi is kind of like, okay, <laughs> nope, nope. And he starts retreating back home immediately. Charon boosters started right away. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> and the glide is in production as well. So, uh, oh, Nasty's actually supply blocked. So that's quite Ooh. bad for him right now. It's, okay, it's not going to last for too long. And you can't so, call down supply in Starbo either, so that really sucks. It, it does. Why can you call down supply in Starcraft 2? I never understood that, but whatever. Um, well, Ring of so, Turrets trying to go up, but these carriers are already at the base, guys, and interceptors have been unleashed. He just leaves. Whoa. Just not Whoa. a chance. He knew it. I...